YouTube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name is Roger. I own a company called QVO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. Today, we are taking a look at probably one of the most aesthetically pleasing rifles on the market. I am talking about the Battle Arms Development Authority Elite Rifle. Now, as always, I like to give you guys full disclosure on how I come about getting these guns in for review. Over the last year, I have been able to work with the Battle Arms team as they are local here in Las Vegas. You all might remember our video we put up around SHOT Show on the quietest gun I own, which is their silent professional. Anyway, Battle Arms is in the teeny process with my old department, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, to become approved for duty use. I thought a great idea would be to get this gun on the range in both a patrol configuration as well as an SPR DMR configuration. Since the LV MPD has created an SPR program for their officers over the last few years. When I brought this idea to Battle Arms, they liked the idea and provided their 16 inch Authority Elite rifle for us to use and keep for this video. Okay, let's get into the specs. The Battle Arms Development Authority Elite Rifle is built on their BAD 5.56 Billet 7075 T6 aircraft grade aluminum receiver with integrated ambidextrous controls and their 15 inch free float rail with M-lock attachment appointments at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions. Every rifle comes with a 4150 chrome molly steel black nitride barrel chambered in 223 wild, their rack ambidextrous charging handle, a single stage enhanced nickel Teflon coated trigger and a black nitride bolt carrier group. It will also come with their bad ATG grip which allows the grip angle to be placed at 17, 25 or 33 degrees. Now I mentioned integrated ambi controls and we will touch on that during the range portion of this video but right now I did want to highlight their new badass pro safety selector. I really dig this selector because it comes with the normal 90 degree option or the short throw option which is what I prefer. The badass pro selector has one standard length lever and one short lever which is also reversible, allowing you to have easier access with your thumb and not be in the way when using your index finger to engage the safety. The rifle will also come with a B5 Bravo stock, a mid-length gas system, and weighs in at just about six pounds. They accomplish this with purposeful cuts and windows throughout the rifle. This keeps the weight down and maintains the aesthetic with how clean the lines are. The lightweight feature is a big deal for me as well, and you'll see why shortly. Now, if you prefer a shorter length platform, they also make it available in a 10 and a half inch pistol or SBR. Lastly, the Authority Elite comes in their super clean Battle Arms gray finish. Okay, with the specs now out of the way, let's get on to the range footage. Before sitting down to do the talking points, I took this gun out to the range on three separate occasions, and I have to say, a lot of good things happened. Our first range trip was out with my old partner from the LVMPD to practice some long range shooting using LPVOs. The furthest we shot out to was just under 400 yards, however, it was also at midnight and we were using both white light and night vision aiming devices. Now let's go back to what I said earlier about the lightweight features of this rifle. In my experience, even the lightest rifle gets heavy at the end of a long range day. With that being said, I wanted to specifically use this rifle in a nighttime SPR configuration because of how many attachments I would have to be adding to it in order for it to perform with little to no ambient light. For this range session, I configured the rifle with a lot of fun toys. At the front of the rifle, I put on my Griffin Armament M4 SDK suppressor, a Magpul M-Lock bipod, a Modlite 18650 weapon light activated by the Unity Tactical hot button, and the BE Myers Maul. For the optic, I went with the Attaball X 1-10 first focal plane scope which did a great job of getting us on target at night. Lastly, I added the Law Tactical folder so that I could store this in my Vertex Gamut checkpoint backpack. Because my buddy Mushi, well when he goes shooting, he likes to hike up the side of a mountain so that we have to shoot from unorthodox positions. Um, I dig it because we get a good workout in and it's honestly a lot of fun. For this video, I also wanted to get some first person footage through the Attaball X scope, so I purchased a Tacticam camera. This camera mounts over your scope and records what you see through the optic. This is a great tool for getting content and allows you all to see how bright the Mod Light weapon light really is and how dark it was when we were out there shooting. So 
was wondering about how the footage was captured, I'm using a Nikon Z50 mirrorless camera, but I had the IR blocker removed from the camera so it picks up full color night vision to include the IR laser devices, which normally would not be seen by the naked eye. So during the rain session, we shot from a tripod, we hiked up the mountainside, and also shot off of our backpacks, and we did use some large rocks as stable platforms as well. I'm happy to say that the rifle performed flawlessly, and we didn't experience any issues at all. Um, now, as you could probably tell, it was pretty windy during that first rain session, so I decided to go out again at night and put some more rounds and get more footage out of the gun. Um, John, Paul, Eric, and I headed out to a flatter desert area and set up various steel targets. I wanted to shoot some more from the tripod and also get some shooting on the move training while wearing night vision devices. It was during this rain session that we hit the 1200 round mark and that's when we started encountering some malfunctions. Um, let me preface though and mention that I had not cleaned the gun since that first rain session and every single round that we had fired through the gun was while the rifle was suppressed. So I'm pretty stoked that the Authority Elite rifle was able to get through 1200 rounds suppressed without being cleaned once before we started experiencing any malfunctions. Nice. It was a quick thing to fix, quick wipe down, some lube, and the gun was back up and running flawlessly. Sweet. Again, we used my Nikon mirrorless configured for full color night vision to get this footage. Um, to better illustrate this for everyone, I recorded uh, some of the footage of us out here shooting on my iPhone so that you could see how dark it really was out there. So I'm pretty pleased with how the Authority Elite rifle performed as a special purpose rifle. And although it wouldn't be likely that you'd be engaging a threat on the move or at close distance with this setup, I still wanted to give it a shot. And uh, to make it even more fun, I wanted to do it while using night vision devices. Uh, I'm happy to report that it's very manageable. Um, it's not light by any means with all the stuff that's on there, um, all the bells and whistles that I've, I've set this thing up with, but I was stoked to run it on the move and from a standing position without any major discomfort. Now for our third and final range session, um, during this range session I decided to run Eric and Paul through a short rifle class. Um, the class consisted of drills and techniques commonly taught in a basic patrol rifle course. We went over everything from reloads and malfunction clearances to shooting on the move. For this session I set up the Authority Elite in a configuration I would most likely use if I were to carry this as a patrol rifle. This included the Modlite 18650 weapon light mounted in conjunction with their mod button momentary pressure pad. I also ran a Holosun HE515 GT red dot on a Reptilia 193 mount with Magpul Pro backup sights, an Arasaka finger stop as a quick reference point for proper placement of my support hand, and lastly, a Lunar Concepts contour padded sling. I definitely have to say that after the two range sessions prior to this one, this rifle felt light, like super light. Um, now prior to filming this video, Eric had purchased his own Authority 10 half inch pistol, which he brought out to the range for this class. I wanted to focus a lot on his manipulations through the class. Um, the reason being is because Eric is a lefty. Now, as I mentioned before, the Authority Elite comes with integrated ambidextrous controls. You have both a mag release and bolt release on each side of the lower receiver. Um, this was Eric's first rifle class ever, and after a few drills, he was finding the controls very intuitive and easy to use. He was able to perform reload smoothly and efficiently utilizing the ambi controls, and he had no issues getting up on target and sending rounds downrange using the ambi safety selector with configure levers to his liking. Now, of course, we had to run some build drills because why not? Um, they're super fun and create a little competition among friends. Um, each of our guns were configured with different muzzle devices and different triggers, so we all took turns running each other setups. Um, I'll talk more about that towards the end of this video though. One twenty two. First shot was a three six. All clean. One more time. One twenty three. One oh nine.
One, two, three, let's go again. 152. So guys, my overall thoughts on the Battle Arms Development Authority Elite Rifle. It's pretty freaking sweet. Um, I've always been a fan of the design and aesthetic of the Battle Arms line. Um, as I educated myself more about the platform though, I found out that the relief cuts, windows, and angles were all purposeful with the intent of making the gun lightweight and durable. Uh, I would definitely say that mission is accomplished. Um, in my opinion, this rifle would make a great patrol rifle or SPR, and I'm happy that the guys and gals from my old department will be able to run them for duty. So if you are in the market for a solid rifle or a 10 and a half inch pistol, I think you'll find yourself very happy with the Battle Arms Development Authority Elite. Um, I could definitely see a 10 and a half inch Authority pistol with maybe a Law Tactical folder as the perfect hidden truck gun. As always though guys, I do want to mention a few things that I would change about the configuration of the gun. Me personally, I prefer a two stage trigger over the single stage trigger that comes with the rifle. Um, during that build drill footage, you'll notice that I was able to run Eric's gun a lot faster and smoother than mine. Um, he's running one of my favorite triggers, which is the Geisley SSAE, uh, stands for their Super Semi-Auto Enhanced. Uh, I'm just able to run a two stage trigger more smoothly. I have a few friends that love their single stage triggers and that's what works for them, but a two stage is what I prefer and that's the way to go for me. If you're like me, this is a simple drop in solution. Um, I would also want to see the Authority Elite shipped with some type of iron sights. Um, something low profile and minimal that matches their aesthetic. Uh, something like maybe the Magpul Pros or the Bobro Engineering iron sights. I think those would be a great fit as well. Um, other than that guys, I'm pretty stoked on the build and I'll definitely be making this into a permanent SPR setup for our nighttime shooting slash hiking sessions. Well guys, that is all I have for you today. I appreciate you checking out the video. Um, I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, please give us a thumbs up down below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as we post new videos every week. Um, I do check out the stats guys and the majority of you guys out there are not subscribed to the channel who are following the content. So please consider subscribing if you do enjoy the content that does help us out. If you want to directly support our content, please check out our Patreon link down below. Um, Patreon members get first access to new content, new gear, discounts, and giveaways. They are a big reason why we can continue to create the content for you all to watch. Thanks again guys for watching and as always, I will see you in the next video. What's going on? What's wrong? It's wind, man. Wind won't leave me alone.